the simulation is breaking down. They are the words that I have been hearing over and over again, resonating and resounding throughout my entire being for these last days, the last week, especially as we catapult towards this incredibly gargantuan, wonderful cosmic event of the solar eclipse, the full solar eclipse happening on the 8th or the 9th of this month of April, depending on where you are. This time has been prophesized, it's been talked about as being one of the major shifts that we can possibly go through um, during this whole entire awakening process of humanity that we are um, moving collectively and individually through. So what does that actually mean? The simulation is breaking down. It means that all of the things that we took for granted as being normal, as being real, may be being questioned right now. We may be discovering within ourselves, awakening to truths, uh, to deep cellular realizations that uh, things perhaps aren't always as they seem or aren't actually as we may have been programmed or conditioned to believe. There's one thing to conceptualize awakening, to conceptualize, uh, I guess, enlightenment or spirituality or, you know, these great wisdoms that drop in for us. There's many things that we, we can um, think that we know. And then along comes a time usually supported by the grand cosmic energy such as now where real truths start to be revealed to us in a way where for some reason we just get it in every single cell of our body and it moves from being a conceptual truth into something that is deeply embodied. One of the most incredible things that I feel that we can be working with now that I have been doing a lot of and making it my practice every single day, even beyond sitting in meditation, is learning, practicing, developing, remembering how to move energy somatically through our body by marrying breath, with some movement of, of muscle, of bone, of joint, of ligament, um, and our focused awareness on the way that the energy is moving through the body. A lot of these symptoms that many of us are experiencing are happening because as this energy is awakening, it's arriving to us. Where does this energy even come from? Well, for me, I feel that it's a combination of what is arriving to us, meaning in times like we're in right now, where we've had a lot of um, photonic light arriving to us through the solar flares from the sun. We've had a lot of galactic and cosmic light arriving to us, hitting the planet, meaning that also hits us, meaning we are conduits of this light. We anchor this light into the earth as the earth receives it and transcends and is recalibrated uh, to a new frequency, so are we. And then we have these big cosmic events like this eclipse coming up where the veils become very, very thin, where the nature of the universe, the nature of the cosmos is going through a massive transition, transformation, recalibration. And as we are a part of that, we are also experiencing and feeling that um, perhaps these cosmic milestones were always set up to be here, to be in alignment in a process with our own awakening and awakening of our planet. Who knows? But there seems to me to definitely be a divine order to all of this. And this is what the ancient people knew and understood and practiced so well is that in their humility, they allowed themselves to be guided by these cosmic events. And they understood that these solar returns, these equinoxes, these eclipses, and other cosmic events as they studied and watched our divine origins and stars and married that to the geography and the topography and the map of the earth, that there were portals and gateways that we could utilize to come into harmony and union with the cosmic energies to really, really facilitate and catapult our growth. And this is one of them. This eclipse is one of them. So as we move towards these times, we are feeling 
the shakeup of those energies within us. We're feeling in our being wherever there is a stagnancy. Some people refer to it as a block. I prefer to think of it as just a stagnancy where the energy isn't able to move, where it isn't able to flow. And these aches and these pains and these activations in the body that we feel, it's kind of like um, a water uh, coming down a stream or, or out, of a, out of a dam perhaps. And you know, the water, if it hits a, um, somewhere where it tries to stop the flow, the water will, will find its way around that. Or eventually, if the pressure is big enough, the water will eventually push through that. So the energy that's arriving to us and the energy that is arising within us because it is your energy, it's our energy, this divine energy, this cosmic energy, this Sami energy as we call it in the Andes, um, the Sami energy is the highest frequencies of light, the absolute highest. It's like being tickled by God. And then the Kalsai energy is this primordial life force energy, which is almost, almost orgasmic when it's at its fullest. And not meaning um, a sexual energy, but that feeling of vitality and life force that connects us into all things and gives us um, the creativity and all that we need to be the highest versions of ourselves in this beautiful world. They're two of the really important essences and they're arriving to us in abundance at the moment and they're activated within you because they are you as they are also arriving to you. So when we have these symptoms like the feelings of anxiety, the heart palpitations, the racing heart, the, um, the headaches, the inability to sleep or perhaps sleeping a lot, um, racing thoughts, the mental body at the moment, the mental energy is super duper activated as this energy runs um, through us. It's normal. For me, I had very, very strange symptoms where beginning at the beginning of Jan uh, at the middle of January, my hands started to go into these very strange mudras while I'm sleeping. And these little, this little finger in particular on the left hand side almost dis dislocates in the joint and I wake up with it plastered to the bottom of my hand here, something I can't even do in my waking state. And then there would be all kinds of pain in here because it would like, I'd wake up ah, and it would like pop. I'd have to pop it back in. And my fingers were in all of these weird um, mudras creating a lot of discomfort in the joints. And of course, my human self goes about looking for all the reasons why, you know, I'm I, um, looking at the supplements I take, looking at the anything I'm putting in or on. Um, but the, the greater me knows that this is a part of um, the upgrade of the frequency and the energy that is arriving to me and is arising within me. Now, miraculously, but not, stoked but not surprised, when I got up to Batukaru Mountain to um, facilitate my beautiful group of Humpik Nustas, the medicine women um, that came to join me for the Healer Priestess training here in Bali, as soon as I got to that mountain, I was amazed that the first night I was there, all of a sudden the symptoms were like, wow, going because I was in the frequency of the mountain. By the time we got into the temples and we were working every day in ceremony, it had completely dissipated. So there was an integration of that energy and one of the big messages that I had, um, a, a master appeared to me and kept saying over and over again, meditate on your hands, meditate on your hands, meditate on your hands, giving me the directive that my hands are being activated with something beyond what I've ever experienced before to a next level. Because I really believe that in this time and space that we're in, our deepest, most innate gifts are getting activated. They're being remembered, whatever that might be for you. You know, we have to kind of check our ego at the door also because it might be that you've been working you know, diligently towards this for many years in your spiritual path and awakening. And then along comes somebody who hasn't even given a thought to spirituality before and all of a sudden they're waking up into these fully, um, you know, kind of um, dialed in, even enlightened states or, or states of awareness. Um, so 
everyone and everything on some level is being activated at this point. So what do we do about that? It's all well and good to say it, but what do we do about it? We need to relax, just relax, lean in, expand into it, breathe into it. Continue to remind yourself that what is happening and transpiring is awesome. I have a saying that I say all the time, it's stoked but not surprised, meaning that I'm like, yeah, this is incredible. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it's normal. Like w this is what we were born to do. This is what we decided to come for. So the simulation is breaking down. I'll give you a little example of the day that I had the other day. Um, I woke up in the morning riddled with anxiety. It was in my body, it was uncomfortable. There was no thought process that went along with it. I wasn't lying there thinking about the things I had to do or you know what was on my plate. It wasn't any of that. It was a feeling in the body. So I began to breathe uh, somatically, meaning with all of my attention, my awareness, my breath and movement, I began to breathe energy and expand into those areas of contraction. And like that, within, I don't, wouldn't even say minutes, like maybe a minute, that anxiety had popped through into this state of absolute bliss, vitality, life force, even orgasmic energy arriving into the body because by focusing and presencing on those areas that were contracted and constricted and tight, I was able to move the energy flow there and open it so the stagnation became unblocked and the energy was able to move. Then I go downstairs, I'm hanging out my washing and I look in the house and there's a little bird and it's got stuck inside of the house. Now the old, the normal me, the old me, normal me, um, would have gone into a panic because I have such compassion for animals and I would have been flapping around trying to get it out, probably making matters worse, you know, in a panic that, oh my gosh, this poor little thing. But I, I, a, a, a whole different energy came over me and I stood back and I looked at her and I said to her, you know what to do, sweetheart, do it. And I just stood back and held the space for her and sent her the energy. And she, all of a sudden she stopped flapping and flying up against the glass and doing all the things and being in a, in a dither about how to get outside. Her nervous system calmed down and she, I could see her feel, she sensed the breeze, she saw the light and she went straight out the open door. And she'd probably been in there for a really long time. So this was a beautiful reminder for me and a lesson for me that our role of being in service isn't to drag and force and push and pull and lead and you go there and you have to do this and here, let me save you, let me help you. You know, it's not about that. It's about empowering the individual to see where the portal is open, to see where the door is open, to feel the call of the cosmos to feel the, the, the breeze on the skin to follow the light and step through the doorway and our job um, as facilitators and space holders is to listen to the energy work with the energy and to stand back and allow that sovereign being um, the, and empower that sovereign being to find its own way through this is how I move through my day, by always watching, watching, listening, watching, listening for the signs that are guiding me, that um, are teaching me. Then I go to Pilates, funny thing, standing in the Pilates, I'm doing my exercise, I look in the mirror and all I can see is a man. There was no Gemma, there was, I could not see me as a woman at all, I could only see a man. And all of a sudden I started having this download about the whole gender neutral um, thing you know that's happening on the planet at the moment and I and I got shown and I heard so clearly that we are this life our life this life on planet earth is the avatar movie in reverse so in avatar in the movie the human is plugging in and becomes the avatar in an alternate reality we are the avatar the consciousness plugging in to the avatar on the earth and we are having an experience in this simulation, in this reality. 
that was just like, whoa, this is something that I've contemplated, thought it knew, but it was just like, that it, it changed everything. So I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, so if my consciousness wants, chose before it came here to experience its ride, its game, its, um, its life as the avatar, as the human avatar on this earth, and it chose to experience it as a boy and it came in as a girl, well, then why can't the consciousness choose differently, right? Why can't the consciousness choose whatever it wants to experience and be free to choose whatever it wants to experience without all of the limitations and the judgments? And why do those limitations and judgments arise? Because humans believe that they are their body. They believe that they are their mind. We've forgotten that we are consciousness having an experience in physical form. But not only that, we are consciousness that is consciously choosing to have an experience in a physical form. So once we start to really not just think about that because it can blow your mind a bit, but once it goes into the cells and into the body, then you can let go of a lot of your judgments. You can understand that there are some brave souls that have come right out on the front line to bust these paradigms open. And then eventually things will come back into a sense of, um, you know, it's like normalizing the miracle almost. Things come back into a sense of um, harmony. But, it, you know, if we look at any great change that's happened on the earth and if we look at where we are now compared to where we were even 10 years ago, it's phenomenal. So the simulation is breaking down. The way that we thought about things, looked at things is all changing. You know, this, I think by the end of this year, things are going to be very, very different indeed. Um, we really are moving very fast towards this fifth dimensional state of being. And that isn't in another realm. It's not in another place. It's right here, right now. And it's the dimension um, of the heart. It's living from, from um, an expanded awareness um, consciously. So during this eclipse portal, uh, I'm fasting. I decided to um, really attune myself as much as I can to the energies. Tonight I will be going to the temples here in Bali. We also have a thing called Kajang Kliwon and the new moon. Kajang Kliwon is the twice a month where the veils are at their thinnest. So it is an extremely powerful time. And the last thing I wish to say about this is um, along with all of this transformational energy that's happening at the moment to take us to this next level, as well as the physical stuff that you may be experiencing, um, the aha moments and the realization of the truths that have always been there that are revealing themselves to you like never before. There is also opportunities to really move beyond um, any old stuff that we may need to bring completion to. And it can be that the niggly bits um, or the big bits, the mammoth bits are all coming up right now and are slapping you in the face one after the other. I've had it boom, boom, boom with one particular thing. I'm running a process called Cutting the Ties That Bind with my students at the moment. I'll do a public one soon if anyone wants to join it. It's very powerful and it helps us to get to the bottom of these things. But wowzers, it's almost laughable how these things will continue to come up and test you until uh, you complete that lesson, until you get it. And you have to, we're again, using that awareness, be able to see them without judgment, without judging yourself, without giving yourself a hard time, but just like a, a cosmic gardener, go in and see them and pick the weeds out um, and make the decision that you are going to go beyond this. We can't keep ruminating about why it is and because this happened to me when I was a child or this is where it was, identify it, see the root of it, understand where it came from or not. You might be able to, you might not. And then decide that you are going to own your power, own your 50% in co-creation with the universe and change it. None of us are victims. We are powerful, powerful creators. We always knew what we were signing up for. We always knew what, what, um, 
we decided that we wanted to experience and learn and grow and, and enjoy um, on this earth. And we always knew that we would get to a time in our lives where we remembered that we wrote the story and we also remembered that as the creator, we get to write a new story. So that's a, a good reflection for us all over this eclipse period. If there is something, if you don't feel like you're living to your fullest um, potential in some area of your life, if there's something that you know that you want to, to do, to be, to experience, now is the time to lean in to your uh, self-doubts, to lean into your fears because I'm here to tell you they are never going to go away. That is a beautiful and natural part of being human. They help to keep us humble. We just don't want to let them hold us back. So when we lean in and we bust through, then we expand, we ascend, we evolve. And that is what this process is about. And it's not meant to happen in one cataclysmic swoop, although for some lucky people it may. It's a, an incremental process. And these big portals and powerful energies are here to support us, to support you in that process. So make the most of them, spend some time reflecting, um, try not to get too mental about the energies, bring it back into your body, breathe, relax, allow, expand and celebrate the shifts, celebrate the changes because wow, just take a moment to think about where you were not so long ago and where you are now where the world is heading even though it appears chaotic well it is because we need the chaos is breaking things down so that the new can emerge right that's the way that nature works so you know as much as we can we want to be trusting our individual process trusting the collective process uh, and um, tuning in or tuning ourselves to the cosmos and to nature so Happy Eclipse, everybody enjoy. And what I'm sharing here is for now, but it's also um, hopefully guidance for you as we continue to move through this process as well. All my love to you. Bye for now.